The word of the day is inertia. Come on, everybody say it with me. Inertia. You see, your truck can have the absolute best brakes known to mankind, but if you haven't properly secured the 20-ton hunk of granite that you're carrying, the minute you touch those brakes, you're going to have a bad day. Why? Because the granite is just going to keep going, even though your truck is trying to stop. Why? Inertia. Newton's first law of motion. Has two parts to it, but the part that's relevant today is part number two. An object in motion will tend to stay in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are like, Florida Maki, you've just wasted 45 seconds of my day. What are we talking about? Well, unless you've been living under a rock, you have probably heard about this ridiculous story that is very familiar for those of you who have been with the channel for a while, coming out of Maryland. You see, there was this giant lumbering cargo vessel that had pulled away from port and was heading in a straight line right out under the Francis Scott Key Bridge and heading to wherever it was going to go. But a simple loss of power caused it to make a hard veer, a hard starboard turn right into a bridge piling, collapsing the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Wait, McKee, they're not reporting that. That's the truth, and I'm going to show it in today's video. But first, as always, over at the Patreon channel, in the coming few days, we're going to talk about what really happened with the gloves off in Maryland and why. And I've got the proof. I've got the smoking gun. I've got the receipt. I've got all of the information you're going to need to figure out what was really going on and who's tied to it and why. Now, here at YouTube, we can't do that. We're going to talk about some things in generalities today. But if you'd really like to get the meat of this story, join us over at the Patreon channel. The videos are going to come one right after the other over the coming week. Because this is very much like the story from 2017, the make-believe Navy story, about how it was just an accident that caused the loss of all of those lives of the sailors on the USS Fitzgerald and the USS John McCain. One U.S. dollar. That's it. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable. First 90 days. No questions asked. Now, without any further delay... How many of you have ever had a day at the lake where you had a friend who had a boat, maybe you had a boat with a trailer, and you went you went to the dock, back down the ramp, and you went and you unsecured the boat from the winch that cranks it up onto the trailer, and then you just got going backward a little bit, and then you popped on the brakes, and the boat just slid real nice right off into the water right in the same direction you were backing. It didn't have to be under any kind of power. Why? Inertia. Inertia. And the same thing at the end of the day, after you've gone out and had a good time in the lake, you back up the trailer, you get it all set, and then you get the boat kind of aligned with the trailer, and you give it a, a good pop, and then you let go of the throttle, and you just let it coast with inertia right up onto the trailer. Now, as you can see here, and this image is from CBS News, no conspiracy theories here, the giant cargo ship took off and made a gentle turn and was going in a nice straight line. A nice straight line that would have taken it directly underneath the highest point of the Francis Scott Key Bridge right here. But what actually happened? Well, allegedly, we get the story that because the lights flickered, that would cause some type of a massive hardcore turn to the right. Now, the videos that are being shown on YouTube are misleading, and they are misleading on purpose. They want you to believe that the ship was moving from left to right and would have needed to make a right-hand turn to go, and it's just because of the perspective of the camera. All that ship, that ship could have cut power purposefully if it had wanted to, and it would have just sailed directly straight exactly where it needed to go under that bridge, and nothing would have happened. You see, it has to do with perspective. Now, this is absolutely ridiculous. There are insurers all over the world that have put in place all sorts of procedures to make sure that this is literally an impossibility unless somebody wants it to happen. 
Now, who remembers, those of you who've been with the channel for a while, security fears over cargo ships going dark near, quote-unquote, terror zones. Hundreds of vessels are found to switch off tracking devices and take unexpected routes. Interesting story, don't you think? Once again, here's another picture of the bay just outside. I'm just going to zoom out here so everybody knows where we're at. Here's Baltimore, Washington, D.C. Sparrow Point. Sparrow's Point. Just a nice, easy 180 degree turn, then straight out. Now, here's the part that confuses everybody. In this video, I can't show this particular one because it would violate their copyright. Um, First Coast News grabbed this. You see the ship, and it's moving from left to right until it gets directly underneath this, at least from this perspective the piling. And then all of a sudden, if you watch closely, the stern, the rear of the vessel starts to arc over to the point where the bow is then pointed directly at, from our perspective, this bridge piling. This ship under power makes a hard, incredibly hard starboard turn into the piling under power. It didn't lose power and drift into the piling. It wasn't just floating along and getting pushed by the current. And even if it was, this river current would have pushed it straight out. It wouldn't have pushed it from the left to the right, starboard, uh, port, either one. It would have just continued straight. Now, the real key here, the real key here, and we're going to show this over at the Patreon channel, is to speed this video up. They have this going absolutely ridiculously slow. And when people look at it, they don't notice how hard the turn is. You can speed it up to 2x on YouTube, but I would suggest taking that, recording it, and then speeding it up again. Or if you have some other player that you can do a 4x or a 16x playthrough, you'll see it. You will absolutely see the purposeful turn that this thing made. It's it's not even a... Even the AIS, hold on, where's the AIS track? I have this here. Even the AIS track shows this. And once again, Vessel Finder, I'm not going to violate their copyright. I'm not going to play the video here. But it shows this hard turn this thing makes at roughly between eight and nine knots. It was actually accelerating, believe it or not. How did the ship, how, why was it accelerating if it had lost power? Why was it accelerating if it lost power? And like I said, it's not my allegation that it, that it was accelerating. Go watch Container Ship Dolly Struck and Collapsed, Francis Scott Key Bridge from Vessel Finder. You can watch and see. It's accelerating into the turn. So, anyway. But there is a connection to the USS Fitzgerald. And looking at this, it's pretty clear what happened. Once again, I can't talk about it here on YouTube. I wish I could. I really do. I wish I could talk about it. I wish I could uh, show, but I will give you a hint. How many of you saw the Obama movie last summer where it leads off with a giant cargo vessel called the White Lion? Hmm. White Lion. I wonder what Dolly means. That's an interesting name, the Dolly, M.V. Dolly, White Lion. Hmm. Anyway, you see this ship, and it's off this beach, and it's heading straight at the beach. Nobody controlling it, apparently. Unable to stop itself. Funny thing, it hits the beach, it grounds, but it keeps going. And I guess you would have to ask yourself, golly, why would it just keep going and going and going like that? Well, inertia. You see, if you believe the mainstream story about what happened with the MV Dolly, you're a science denier. You're a science denier. And this is basic science. This is like fifth grade science, sixth grade science about inertia. There's all sorts of experiments you can do with inertia. Some are a little, well, more inconvenient than others, given the picture. here. But it's Newton's first law of motion. There's no way that vessel would have hit that piling, unless somebody wanted it to. Period. That's just the way it is. And 
that nobody, virtually nobody, is speaking up about this. There was also a scene in the Obama movie where there was a whole bunch of cars being controlled by GPS just slamming into each other because somebody had hacked GPS. Hint, hint. So, I will leave it there. But like I said, if you would like the full and complete, unadulterated breakdown, join us this week, this coming week, over at Patreon, where we're going to go step by step. We're going to go granular, going all the way back, talking about everything that happened with the Fitzgerald, with the McCain, step by step, that full investigation, and everything that goes along with that, that correlates to this. And one U.S. dollar, not per video, per month. It's $1 investment per month. And I guarantee you're going to get a lot more than you bargained for over there. Hundreds of never-before-seen videos talking about a wide range of subjects. But this one, this is one that is very particular to the very roots of the Florida Maquis. This was one of the very first topics that we talked about. It predates Antarctica. This was way back in 17, where we completely uncovered all of the lies from the U.S. Navy, and now we're getting going to get lies from the U.S. government about this. But it has all sorts of correlations to what's going on in Europe and why. So I will leave it there. God bless you guys for being here. I very much appreciate it. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.